Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Technical Forum of Hydrogen and Fuel Cells Europe. My name is Bernhard Jekyll. I'm the moderator for today and for my last moderation for today. And I want to say we have a lot of presentations, as I said, today, the last one, but tomorrow there, there will be a couple of more. And the uh, next presentation will be about heat transfer solutions for green hydrogen production. And we got the manager of process, HIEX, what that is, will he explain? Heat exchange, but this will be one subject. Mid-Europe Energy Division in Germany of Alpha Laval Mid-Europe in Germany. And I present Achim Heimek. Yeah, thanks for uh, welcoming me and uh, giving us uh, the presentation uh, chance here. Uh, again, we are uh, discussing here uh, heat transfer solutions which we want to offer for um, the hydrogen environment. Um, but before I uh, start with this, uh, I would like to introduce our company just briefly. Um, it was founded in 1883 by Gustave de Laval, um, a very um, well-known person for the Laval nozzle, maybe. Um, he invented the first high-speed separator. Later on, we added the heat exchanger technology to our portfolio in the 1930s, before we then uh, accomplished uh, or acquired fluid handling equipment uh, in our business. And uh, now we are uh, with our product portfolio uh, that we sell today to different industries. Um, Gustav Delaval was a quite innovative uh, person and his innovations are also today very important uh, and Alpha Laval uh, continues to develop things and we are active in uh, clean energy um, applications, for example the fuel cells, power to X um, applications, energy storage, biofuels, carbon capture technologies and last but not least, and this is why we are all here, we are active in green hydrogen applications. So what do we do here um, in green hydrogen? Ideally, you produce electricity by means of water, solar power, or um, photovoltaic. And that uh, electricity goes into electrolyzers and then you produce um, the green hydrogen in the electrolyzers. So what do you do then with, uh, with the hydrogen? Uh, it can find uh, applications in industries for producing chemicals or materials. You can use it as um, fuels um, for uh, power generation or heat generation. And uh, we will also use um, hydrogen uh, in uh, transport applications for, few, for, for trucks, for buses, airplanes, and cars. Now let me explain uh, how we see the um, hydrogen process from a heat exchanger perspective. What you see here is an electrolyzer. And where you have an electrolyzer, you need to uh, remove excess heat from this electrolyzer. It's around 30% uh, that needs to be removed. So what you do then is you put some heat exchangers inside. It can be gasketed plate heat exchangers, for example, and you remove the heat from the electrolytes. You also have a stream of hydrogen going out of the electrolyzer and uh, oxygen. And also these um, elements can be cooled down by heat exchangers. Then the hydrogen goes further into the storage and compression. But before we do that, we need to remove the heat that is recovered here. Either we dissipate it in the environment and there are Alpha Lavalis heat exchanger solutions like the plate heat exchangers or wet surface air coolers. But dissipating into the environment is maybe not what we want. If we want to make the whole process more efficient, we should look into recovering the heat. And that can be done here in these heat exchangers, be it plate or be it um, uh, gasketed plates or, or um, uh, braced plates. And we would like to recover the heat for, for example, housing, for heat pumps uh, and other solutions. But that's not the only way how you can uh, recover the heat from the electrolyzer cell. 
Um, today, people are more and more looking into offshore wind farms, and you want to use the electricity from the offshore wind farms directly onshore, uh, offshore uh, and uh, use uh, electrolyzers there. Now, a 10 megawatt electrolyzer approximately needs 50 to 60 cubic meters of water, of fresh water. You cannot use the seawater. So what we do then is we recover the heat from these heat exchangers and bring it to a desalination system. We evaporate the seawater, condense it, and the condensate can be used in the electrolyzer cell, and this is the water you, you drive the cell with. So these are basically the, the applications uh, in the electrolyzer area, but then we also have here um, the area where we have the consumption of the hydrogen. And that can be, uh, for example, the industrial use, power to X. Um, we can produce chemicals. If you take the hydrogen, if you take, for example, carbon dioxide from carbon dioxide recovery processes, then we can recombine this and produce methanol, for example. And also in this process of producing methanol, we use our heat exchanges and also in the recovery process for the carbon dioxide, you use amines, and in the process of uh, lean and rich amines, you use our heat exchanges. You can also do ammonia, for example, again, with our heat exchanges. Um, and there are many, many other uh, applications for heat exchanges in this hydrogen conversion to chemicals. Another option is uh, the fuel cell. Where you have fuel cells, uh, you, you burn the hydrogen and you generate electricity and waste heat. What do you do with the waste heat? You can recover it, for example, in uh, our plate heat exchanges to bring it then uh, for heating of uh, houses or whatsoever. Then when we talk about uh, the transport sector, we have the possibility um, to use our heat exchangers in hydrogen refilling stations as a pre-cooler for the hydrogen. There we have uh, heat exchangers like our high block. This is a heat exchanger uh, which can withstand pressures up to 1,250 bar, temperatures up to 800 degrees C. Well, in the um, hydrogen refilling station, we are not talking about very high temperatures, but we have high pressures. The pressures are in the range of 350 bar for uh, truck uh, loading and uh, around 700 bar for normal uh, cars. And this heat exchanger is uh, suitable um, to accommodate those um, pressures. We typically talk about uh, temperatures of cooling down from 60 degrees C to um, ambient temperature, maybe a little bit below and uh, this heat exchanger can do it. The advantage to other systems is that um, the heat exchanger is so compact, it has uh, such a low hold-up volume of hydrogen that it reacts very fast. So you have uh, an immediate response when you start filling uh, the tank, and you also have a back-to-back -back, um, um, procedure. So you fill a, a truck or a car, and the next one can be filled right afterwards without any waiting time. So, and uh, as it is so compact, you can also install it directly in the dispenser of the hydrogen refilling station. So you don't have to dig a deep uh, groove, so on, but you can install it directly in the dispenser. So that was uh, basically my short presentation about our thermal solutions in hydrogen applications. Thanks for listening. I'm now open for questions, or if you do not want to ask here, we are on the booth C48. Thank you again. Any questions? Any question from the audience? Not right now. Question, question. No question right now. Okay, thanks a lot. <laughs> thanks. Okay. I have to get your name. Thanks a lot, Achim Heimig. Thank you, sir.